Take five. See, when it's all said and done, everything that's done to be said. Living through the lines of my life, zero regret. Looking through my eyes to recite, seeing what I said, and proud to be a part of this game. I can't reset. Made my own destiny here, never forget. Deal or no deal, the Mandela the set. Word to Mandela, I'm still locked in a sense From the first time I heard Red Alert rocking on Kiss Now I'm rocking events, flying all around the map Only English they know was all the words in my rap Pocket full of Euro intact, when I get back I don't rock a lot of jewelry, but gold cover my plaques Yeah, I did that, word to God on my knees Made my mom's proud, she's still breathing the sea Living out a dream became reality For the record, this is a present to all y'all from me Hi, I'm Carol, and I am the mother of Torre, and um, this is my review of For the Record. Um, the day before the album is supposed to touch down, uh, normally you get your album a couple weeks in advance if you're lucky, um, but if you indie, you get your album a day before it's supposed to come out. I, it's, it's so hard for you to enjoy the moments when you're going through the moments, and especially when you're responsible for everything. So when I first saw the CD, the first thing I checked for was to make sure everything was correct on it and that I wanted to hurry up and get into the vehicle so I could pop it in and play it and make sure that it played right. This magic moment. Yeah, this is actually not what I wanted. I wanted the real vinyl grooves. I'll show you what I was talking about. This is cool though, but it's not, it's not what I was asking for. Do it. Let's pop this hoe in. See what it's hitting for. What's going on, y'all? Back live, Brooklyn, New York. This is for the record. And right now, I'm joined by Trina. Trina and Francis. And Francis. What's the last album you bought? Uh, <laughs> Song. I ain't bought an album in a long time. Okay. What's the last uh, piece of music you purchased, album or song? The last piece of music that I actually purchased. I don't think I buy anything with all this bootleg and downloading going on, just to be honest with you. The song that you're listening to now, how did you get it? I downloaded it off my phone. Do you buy music at all? Um, sometimes. Do you purchase any music at all? Nah, not really. Not at all. What's the last album you bought? Hmm. I, I'm going to be honest and say that I don't buy every album, every artist album that I do like. But if it's that, that one artist that I'm really feeling or and I want to support, I'm going to buy that album. You can sell a physical CD outside of your vehicle, usually out of the trunk. Now, it's not a lot of stores, man. It's not a lot of stores in New York that still carry CDs. But with every release that I put out from Daily Conversation to Double Barrel, um, I made sure that I did an in-store just because... You want to get out there, you want to chop it up with the people that are supporting your music. And it's definitely a way to have a strong first day and a first week. So let me get a couple of these. How many you got? That's how many I want. No, I don't like the Queen verse. It's pretty awesome. I'm going to hear a lot of streets in there. I'm going to hear a lot of streets in there. Oh, what the hell is the streets in there? Thank you for coming through, man. I love you. Good day. I'm so proud of you. I'm proud of you. Yeah, Moms is like the number one supporter these days. I mean, the whole album, it just flows. Like, every song, it, it just flows. Like, um, you know, you got a little mellow over here, a little hardcore, rough, rugged, and raw. You know, and j basically, it shows his versatility. Like, he got a whole lot of different styles, and, you know, it lets, it lets you know that like he, he, you know, he could, he could do something over here, he can go over there, maybe he might just, you know, ride and glide in the middle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Atlanta. A3C has officially begun. Touchdown. Hollis here, ran to this guy, Elmine. Should be dope, man. We got a lot of shows lined up.
Friday, uh, second day of A3C. Got down here yesterday. Pretty uh, crazy from the time we got off the planes to the New oh, Era yeah. store for uh, meet and greet with some journalists and bloggers. The big thing today is the um, the album listening session on the on the mobile studio bus. I definitely wanted to get a chance to premiere the album, you know. So I hooked up with Unique Squared, who does this mobile studio on a bus. On a they they got it out of the bus, turned it into a whole studio. And I thought it'd be cool if I did a listening session on that bus. Shit's about to happen. listening session was it was fun it was a dope experience and it definitely kind of turned into more of a party than the listening session when it was all said and done and a bunch of people came through from jazzy jeff to canon and crisis and e jones and for 10 ill mind like all these guys who were on the album showed up and um jay dilla's uncle herm was dead i was real ill to me so I don't feel like people are gonna give you bad feedback in your face per se, but I was just kind of watching the body language and the energy of the people. The oohs and the woos, you know, you see those eyebrow raises. So I was just kind of reading, I was kind of reading the people were like, well, the joint to come on, people would flip through the book real quick, like, who did that? I got that first one out, now I'm cool. The best response, um, I think the first go round, a lot of people reacted to um, that raw. That Raw, number six, the tr track number six uh, on the CD. I think this song is, is, is hardcore. He telling people like, you're not, you not in my zone. Like, you, you know, stay in your lane. And he separates himself from other artists on this song. And he lets you know that like, you could never be his pedigree. That's the, be the best name he could have ever gave it. It's That Raw, because the song is That Raw. That's it. Side to side like this. You want to do it like you waving at P-Rock? You waving at C-Dab? Like performing is just something that I'm real passionate about. I was looking forward to touching some of those some of those records that I thought would go over well on stage, and they pretty much went over well. Were you nervous at all? Nah, never nervous. I am. I am. It's, I get nervy. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, kind of like before I go on stage, it's always like those on stage, you know, or just before the show jitters. jitters. I go by the name of Shy Stimuli. People call me Stimuli. Shy. Put them together, switch it around. Sometimes, you know, we don't always feel so supreme. And a lot of these fucking rappers be lying to y'all. So I'm gonna tell the truth for a little while. Me and Sha met a number of years ago through a mutual friend that uh, we had, I knew growing up in Coney Island, my man, Doug Brown, a black. You know, Sha was kind of like the talk of the town. He had this big record deal with Virgin. Um, he was kind of poised to be the next big thing. I was signed to Virgin Records. Like my name was on the, on the board with a release date. And it's like, you know what to do in order to give them what they want. In order to make that album come out, you know how to make singles. You know, I got the record deal, so it's not something that I'm foreign to. I was never dropped, like, I was shelved. Like, that's the chance you take when you sign to a major, um, because one person can get fired, or one person can leave the company, or one person could not like you, and it changes the whole project. At the time, it broke me, and I felt rejected. You know, I felt like, I worked all this time to get a record deal and, and um, you know, it was supposed to change my life and, and for a while I felt validated, you know what I'm saying? I felt excited and then all of a sudden it just got swept from under me. Someone's life, like that's what people don't seem to realize, especially people who work at these labels and companies. Your job, you know, you're gonna have your job regardless, you wanna show for artists, put artists out, whatever, but somebody who's been working 15, 16, 17, 18, 20 years, on being an artist and they get this one shot and then you just take it away from them, you know, with no regard for their life. It, it's so crazy, man. I, I never want to put my destiny in anybody's hands like that. Um, as far as the hip hop dream, I was talking to Tori earlier about it, about just being a nice MC and being good on stage. And, you know, 
having booth presence and things like that and how that pales in comparison now to YouTube views and world star views and things of that nature. You have people that still still want to do the MC thing. And I think I think those those are the ones that I salute. Cause it's it's tough out here. But can you just stop at just that? Like just rapping in your room and putting out music and trying to be hot? What do you think makes like for a good record? Do you think it's like the lyrics or is it just the beat? Is it the hook? Um, I think it's the beat. It's what do you think like makes a, a, a hit? Do you think it's more driven by the artist, what they're talking about? Or is it the beat or is it the hook? What the artist is talking about. Yeah. That's what makes it a hit. Yeah. So like more lyrically. But the lyrics is the most important thing because you're sending out a message. The beats aren't sending out a message. Your voice is sending out the message. And when your voice sends out the message that you're influencing people, you know what I'm saying? So if you're not influencing people, you shouldn't be, if you're not saying nothing good, then don't get on the mic, man. Cool. I don't feel as if we have a lot of dope lyricists. I feel as if we have a lot of characters okay. as far as people just trying to brand their name and their image more than they are trying to put a stamp on their music and how creative they're trying to put the music out to be. Basically what Teray is saying in Are You Ready is like, you better get ready for him because he coming in. Like, he coming in the building, he taking it all. Like the young cats, they out there, they sound basic. You know, he coming in with his sound and, and everybody else need to fall back. Premier said you wake up in the morning, you tweet, I woke up, about to brush my teeth. That's a blessing, you motherfucking right. I would tweet some shit like that. I don't, because usually I'm trying to slide from under your baby mom, so it'd be fucking up my Twitter arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, stay under that bitch. <laughs> be like, the bitch be laying on my tweeting arm. <laughs> yeah, you can stay with that bitch. Yeah, yeah, I rolled from under that bitch like 20 years ago. <laughs> and I ain't never rolled back. Uh, what up, Torrey? The What's album's good, in friend? stores. Yeah, yeah, some stores. You know, For the record. It's the indie life, some stores. All right, my brother Torrey just walked in the house though. What's good, man? Okay, I'm here now. What up, T? What up, Doka? What's going on, fight? Hey, man, you know, new album in stores. You know I gotta come see you first. No doubt, Halftime Radio Show. <laughs> Torrey, for the record. For the record, in stores online. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Your favorite file sharing site. Um, as far as shows, you can catch me out in Boston on the 17th. That's confirmed at, um, at Club Church or okay. Church Club. Out there, I also be at UGHH doing the in store. Nice. And uh, some radio while I'm up there too. You are jamming to 88.9 at night on 88.9 WERS. And this is your girl, Steffi Millions, in the building, in a facility, acting stupidly. And I got the lyrical monster, Torre, live in the studio with me. Uh oh, wait, lyrical monster. Is that me? Yeah, you are the lyrical monster. I didn't even know. Yeah, you are beast, like literally. Arr. <laughs> What's going on, y'all? Thank you for having me so much. So, how you doing today? I'm feeling great, man. I'm feeling great out here in the bean, you know, doing what we do. Uh, promoting this album for the record, you know. Happy to be here, for sure. What's good, folks? Chillin'? Chillin', man. Chillin', man. What's up, man? Let's meet you. What's good, man? It's all right. UGHH is really like the last of the Mohicans now, man. It's, it's just a place that people can physically walk in and buy a piece of vinyl or a CD or a, a, a t-shirt for merch. I mean, they have a great online store, as does fatbeats.com, but it's just something to be said about being able to get up, go down the block, and buy an album. Thank you all for coming out here. Thank you. Um, this is actually a pretty good little size in store going on here, because, you know, we're really underground hip hop, and we don't promote that well. And yet everybody came out, so props to you. Uh, Torre is about to take the stage, so give it up for him. We're gonna do a couple joints. We ain't really putting no set or nothing together. I just figured I'd rock. So, like, the first person to shout a song, that's what I'm gonna Word do. Wordplay! Wordplay. This Whoa. motherfucker would <laughs> say it. The only shit not in the Serato. <laughs> did, I, did we ever do Wordplay live, Holla? Huh? I don't think that's ever happened live. It's not gonna happen today either. But. Who wanted the real shit that Nash told? I'm hoping niggas is out of here. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. Show tonight in Cambridge at the Western Front. The show was cool. The show was cool. I mean, it wasn't like super duper packed out, but at this point, you know what I mean? Like, that doesn't ever surprise me. You know, I mean, I could point fingers about a lot of stuff, 
but at the end of the day, it's on me to make sure that no matter what I do or where I'm at, you know, people want to be there, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, make better music, get, get bigger, get better, push the brand more, you know, just like, I don't want to ever want to leave my destiny in somebody else's hands, so I always look at myself, like, I point the finger at myself first and foremost because it's nobody else's career but mine. Imagine if Tupac would have kids. Never love a soldier for the revolution. And what if them cowards would have never shot big? I bet it'd be sick. Somebody's life could come like full circle to the point where you over here and you a child and you listening to the music and now you over here and you working with the artists, the same people that you, you know, admired and modeled your, 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 yourself after when you were coming up. From, from the very beginning of my career, I've kind of been out to prove something. And I've been out to kind of, just to show that I belong here. Um, never really fully felt embraced or accepted on any real big scale. So every time that I do a record, I'm st I, I still have that. I still have that uh, drive in me. Our, our careers, I feel like, are very similar. I feel like Ace had to really work for everything that he got, you know, because he wasn't the Big Daddy Kane on Cold Chillin', and he wasn't the Cool G Rap on Cold Chillin', and he wasn't the Biz Marquee, and he wasn't the MC Shan, you know? He was the other dude, and he really had to make his own way and really carve out his own lane and 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 demand the respect from the audience and from the label and from the people. For a lot of young artists that haven't gotten that break or haven't gotten that, their foot in the door, that needs to be what drives you. The fact that, you know, every time you write a rhyme, you got to think about the fact that, you know, nobody's giving you that credit or that respect or that love that you really think you should be getting. Nobody's acknowledging your talent the way they should. There's cats out there that are way less talented than you that are on TV with videos and music on the radio and that needs to be what fuels you. Yeah, I'm in the room with a lot of these guys, but you know one, two, three, and four, and I'm just the other dude. So it's like, I really gotta fight for my space. And I feel like Ace had to fight for his space um, on his roster. I took Torrey, I think it was his first time going to Europe. Um, and we went, over, we went overseas and we toured uh, for a few weeks out in, out in Germany and Switzerland, a few spots. Uh, we actually toured in Canada as well, did a nice little run there, and it was, uh, took Torre and, and it was EMC, it was an EMC tour, and um, it got a chance to, to open up, just to kind of test out the waters as far as, you know, being on stage and, and doing the whole thing with Marco, and, you know, I think it was a good experience for him. And he put me in front of a number of different audiences every night for 29 days. It was just, like, great timing, a great opportunity, and me really capitalizing. Um, and being a good performer, I think that if you go out there and you're just feeling yourself a little too much and, you, and you're not giving it your all because of the language barrier or whatever, the people still feel the lack of emotion. So, like me going out there and still sweating out my t-shirt and ruining my fitted hats and really giving the people my all, I think it, it spoke volumes and, you know, it, it enables me to continue to travel out there and rock because now I have that rapport with the fan base and, and there's that respect and you know they're gonna support the music. Europe is my bread and butter at this point, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, just because I know I can go out there and you know, uh, request a certain fee, know that I'll get it and know that, you know, the people that come out will also support and buy merch, you know, and if you do a long enough run, a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month or whatever, then you can make a substantial amount of money and you know, it only took you a month or so to get it. We gonna be over here at the merch yeah. table. We signing t-shirts, yeah. We signing vinyl, we yeah. signing shit, yeah. yeah. And really, man, we just wanna thank y'all for coming out. Put your hands together, put your hands together. Put your hands together. Listen. I put on my Ace in the stage basket, this rap shit. What should I say, got something to say, yeah.
Do you think rapping is easy? Yeah. Like, you think anybody could be a rapper? Yeah. Why so? Because Little B, he's a rapper. He don't got a deal yet, but everyone listens to his music and stuff. Like, okay. So I think you could just become a rapper. You could just become a rapper? Yeah. Now, do you think anybody can rap? Yeah. Yeah? I think the, a lot of days, the stuff I hear on the, music, the radio is like, anybody could do it. Anybody <laughs> could do it. Do you think that anybody could rap? Anybody could be a rapper? I feel like anybody can do anything that they want to do if they try their hardest to do it. Um, if they put their mind to it, they can do it. But I think people right now are in the music business just because it's the cool thing to do. You know what I'm saying? For me, it was definitely it was definitely worth it. Um, every 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 step of the way, it's been worth it for me. Um, I never thought that hip hop would allow me to see some of the places around the world that I've seen to, to to be in some of the venues that I've been in to be in front of some of the crowds that I've been in front of um, if you told me that you know 25 years ago when I was in college just kind of trying to make my way as being a regular just an MC I never would have thought that it would take me this far and that I would be able to live off of music like this um, for the younger cats you know, like like a Torre, they've got to figure out how to make it last for them and how far they're going to go with that. Yes. Yes, it was worth it. Um, I made my debut album. If nothing else, I got it out. I did it the way I wanted to do it. I made the records I wanted to make. I worked with the people I wanted to work with. And I did it, you know, on my own on my own terms and and that to me in itself is just the ultimate you know what i'm saying so it was all worth it um i didn't have to answer anybody i got my own company off the ground and when i look at my album and when i listen to it i know that it's 100 percent me it's what i wanted it's what i wanted since i was a kid you know when i look at the track list and then i see premiere next to pete rock next to large professor next to diamond d like that's really all I ever asked for, so um, I'm really, really pleased with the record. I love the way that it's being received by the people. And um, you know, it was definitely a tough year. There's a lot of ups and downs, but when you get that project out there and at the end of the day, when you're looking at it and you're like, yeah, you know, it, it makes it all worth it. Came up smart with no pride in my system in the beginning, and then I went in. I asked moms about Pops, why he missing? Before I knew being an addict was addiction. Then it kicked Ah, cheapers. Okay, I could do this. I could do this. Oh. Wow, number 15, Panorama. Brings tears to my eyes, obviously. Very touching, befitting. I've always wanted him to rap about his life, what he went through, because that's what the people relate to. He said, came so far, came from nothing. Now I'm on fire, living my life, living my dream on my journey, see my future, claiming my destiny. And when I listen to the lyrics of the song, 
Um, it touches my spirit, touches my heart, and um, it's the truth, right? Um, living his life, living his dream, and doing uh, a wonderful job at it. Small with no pride in my system at the beginning, then I